Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Adam London, Director of the Kent County Health Department. Today is April 10th and I'm here to give you the daily COVID-19 update from Kent County. Across the state of Michigan, as of last count, we're at 21,504 cases, which is an increase of 1,158 over the previous day. Sounds like a lot of cases, but in actuality, that's one of the smaller numbers of increase that we've seen in a while. Statewide, the death total is up to 1,076. So sadly, we did pass the 1,000 mark. Here in Kent County, we're now up to 249 COVID-19 positive cases, which is an increase of 20 over the previous day. And we're up to 12 deaths, which is an increase of three over the previous day. Our thoughts and prayers do go out to the families that have been affected by these most recent deaths. You know, we are seeing, as I've discussed before, a, a general flattening of the curve. While we're seeing increases day over day, the trajectory of this curve has flattened. Uh, and there are a lot of reasons for the success that we've seen so far. One of the things I want to point to is, is the work that, that our team and the help of others, we've done with contact tracing, which is the process of when we learn of a case, we contact that person, we make sure that they are staying in isolation so as not to put others at risk, but we're also finding out who their close contacts were so that we can give them quarantine directions in order to see if they become sick uh, and to make sure that they're not exposing others. We've had a lot of questions about the terms isolation and quarantine, and I've seen in the media and elsewhere where people are using these interchangeably. They are in fact different, so I wanna go over that briefly. Isolation is what happens when we have a person who is sick. We isolate that person to make sure they're not exposing others. Quarantine is what we do to healthy people who've been exposed to someone who is sick. And we don't know if they're going to become sick or not, but it's important that we have some restrictions over their movement so they're not unnecessarily exposing others. This is a term that actually goes back a long ways. These are very old tools. Uh, quarantine was first used during the, the, the Black Plague uh, in the 14th century uh, in Italy. When, uh, when ships would come into harbor, they were required to drop anchor in the harbor and stay out there for 40 days. Uh, and so the term quarantine comes from the Italian words for, uh, for 40 days. So the, these are very old tools. Uh, they're very primitive tools. They are effective. And that's one of the reasons why we're seeing a flattening of the curve right now. Uh, and unfortunately, they're the only tools we have right now. Um, we would love to have a vaccine, and that's one of the differences between this uh, and, and swine flu and other situations in the past where we had a vaccine that was a more effective tool to use right away. Uh, we're really hoping to have more medical treatments to use. There are a couple of things that are very promising right now. One is an antiviral called remdesivir. Uh, this would be to COVID-19, kind of like Tamiflu is to influenza. It's uh, undergoing human uh, clinical uh, trials right now, and we're hoping later this year to have products like remdesivir or others available uh, for helping to treat the symptoms. It's not prevention though, uh, that would be a vaccine. Uh, we're also seeing that there's a lot of research happening with antibody uh, uh, therapies, uh, looking at the, the plasma from people who have recovered from COVID-19. Uh, they have an immune response in most cases, and by taking their plasma, and using that to treat people who are severely ill, we can use the, their immune response to help the sick person. And there's a lot of promise uh, behind that research, and we hope that that becomes available very soon as well. And then finally, as I mentioned, vaccine. That's really the gold standard. That's what we need in order to uh, put an end to this uh, and create true herd immunity without endangering people's lives. Uh, there are a number of trials underway with very promising uh, vaccines. Johnson & Johnson has a product. The University of Pittsburgh has a product. There are a number of these that are being looked at. And I've got a lot of confidence, a lot of faith in these researchers uh, and American industry and technology that we're gonna be able to find a vaccine uh, as quickly as possible, uh, along with other uh, therapies as quickly as possible to help us deal with the effects of coronavirus uh, and also to prevent future cases. And finally, I wanna say thank you to all of you uh, today is Good Friday. The theme of the day is sacrifice. And so I really want to thank all of you because everyone has sacrificed a great deal in the past month in order to flatten the curve and save lives. It's having an effect. Your great work is preventing illness and has saved lives. 
thank you for your sacrifice. It's been very important. So I just want to encourage you, uh, again, to uh, stay positive, stay heroic, and, and please stay at home. Thank you, and have a great Easter weekend.